Welcome to On The Chain. I wanted to play this video that I thought was a really well done job. I mean, it was really well produced, slick, uh, well produced. And uh, let's take a look at it because the Palau, you know, what, what I love about Palau in this USD backed stable coin is the fact that it's like a test run, really. It's a really good pilot if you think about it. And it's a pretty cool thing to think that this tiny island nation could have some really good repercussions on what's happening um, in a lot of other areas. So interestingly enough, but let's cue it up. I want to hear from you guys. Let's pay attention. Let's watch this thing. And I want to hear some feedback from you. What do you think of this? You know, where do your thoughts lie? But let's go ahead and, and pop this on. Palau is in the Western Pacific, a group of islands about 500 miles east of the Philippines. We have a large ocean area that is about the size of Texas. Texas. I think Palau is well known around the world for making sure that what we use, we use sustainably. We know that we have uh, very limited resources. We have the ocean, there's fishing. And there's only so much income you can earn from fishing. We have a tourism base, but you can only have so many tourists. We need to diversify our economy. We need to build a more resilient economy. How do we create the Palawan dream to be something that our young children want to aspire to achieve here in Palau and not go elsewhere? Palau has been working with Ripple to develop a stable coin to easily move payments across borders and internally within Palau really promotes trade and promotes business. The stable coin in our context is essentially a digital representation of the dollar, which is the currency that we use here in Palau. Each digital coin that is minted by Palau uh, into a stable coin is going to be 100% backed by a dollar. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship people interested in doing business in Palau. So very happy to receive US dollar, and we are taking our time to make sure we manage all the potential risks as best we can. The challenge that we face here in Palau is really a payment system uh, challenge. The actual physical currency the logistics of it is one of the challenges that is tightened here in, in Palau and in the islands in general. So the money is brought in by commercial banks, usually via aircraft, so that itself is an expensive way to cargo in money. We don't have security services here, so there's a lot of risk. If you want physical currency, you need to go to the bank and buy it from them. This is a cash economy. We use it for uh, most of our transactions. You have to come to Core and get it. Palau does not have a central bank. So the government issuing a stable coin is tantamount to being central bank digital coin. So that's how we look at it. There are a lot of people here who are unbanked. They don't have access uh, to the financial system. So by having this stable coin as one of our payment methods that's offered in the country, we feel that these particular people will benefit the most and uh, will benefit in a way that, that is uh, easy to access without having to go to ATM and be able to transact money even between themselves in a, in a very affordable way. We have people that live on remote islands. They keep their money under their pillows. Really what we want to be able to do with a stable coin is allow those people to keep that money in a safe and secure place, easy for them to transfer, whether it's at the local market, to a brother or sister, and then most importantly, helping entrepreneurs and small businesses be able to receive and disperse payments in a much more efficient manner. The lowest income earners are really paying a higher cost to transact than anybody else, and that's that's unfortunate. This is, has a way of helping those that are most in need to be able to really get the full value of what they earn and be able to use it in the most effective manner. And going digital reduces your carbon emissions. The XRP ledger is a more sustainable model that has a lower carbon footprint, which as an island, uh, who suffers from the impact of climate change, we want to encourage. We have a, a fish in Palau that we paint on all the uh, meeting houses, and it's the surgeon fish. The surgeon fish is a symbol of unity. And this is a time when we all need to come together, whether it's promoting stable coin, windmills, solar power, that's how we come together to solve the challenges that we have, reduce our carbon emissions, and hopefully save those islands that are so important culturally, historically, and for protecting our turtles. We together 
need to solve the problem. It takes all of us working together. There it is, all, all of us working together to solve a problem, right? So if we think about all the things that we you can do, I mean, you think about a tiny island nation that obviously, they, it talked a little bit about the potential of fishing. Okay, great, but how much income can you earn from that, right? Uh, they had to branch out, but the biggest problem they face is money inbound, right? I mean, having having the effect or, or the ability to bring money into or value, they don't have a central bank because obviously they use the U.S. dollar, which we have a central bank. It's called the Federal Reserve, and I've gone off plenty of times about that. But I think this is interesting in the sense that it's a stable coin backed by the U.S. dollar, so it's a digital form of the dollar. But what's interesting about this is that you know where are we going to draw the line between the CBDC, the central bank digital currency, and a stable coin? Right? Obviously, because it's Palau and because they use the U.S. dollar and they don't have a central bank sounded to me like what he was saying was there's no way they could actually issue without a central bank because they use the US dollar. But the next best thing would be a stable coin, uh, which would be tied to the dollar. And this is interesting too, as we talk about a lot of talk about the BRICS nations, USD dominance going away, all kinds of, all kinds of upside. And I would say maybe potential, I won't say necessarily downside, but I see a lot of that uh, where, where people are looking to say, well, the dollar is going to be gone and everything else. And yeah, that could be possible. I mean, it could definitely be the case there, but I don't think it's going away anytime soon, especially it's not going to just be a switch you're going to be able to turn off. Bearable Bull put this out. I want to see what you guys think about this here. The Bearable Bull put this out. I wanted to do this live, but let's take a look at this. I want to see what you guys think right inside the comments. How high does the XRP army believe that XRP can reach during the 2024 of bull run, what do you guys think here? Is it five to ten dollars? Is it fifteen to twenty dollars? Is it twenty-five to fifty or a hundred to five eighty-nine? Guys, write it in there. Let's do this together. I'm gonna click it. We're gonna just see where we sit here. I want to see where everybody is. Jeff is not banned. Jeff will be back on on Wednesday. Uh, let's see what else. Rain here. Wow. Did not know I was banned three years ago, but came back. Beautiful. What's up, Rain? Rain here. Guys, go follow Rain. Rain, you should drop your credentials in there. If you want to follow somebody that puts out great content, follow Rain. I know he does a Friday night show, and I believe it's on Rumble for obvious reasons, because there's certain things you can say. But let's just jump through this. Uh, time to Time seen in the Yetis. I don't know what that is. Bad politicians. What do we have? So we got 15 to 20. Hans loaded things. Ray runs in the uh, 5 to 10 camp for sure. Alchemist is more of the $5.89, which he may be closer to the truth. Mark Smith is at 25 to 50. We've got uh, Hamza uh, Magrabi says $5.89 plus. Ooh, plus, I like that. Oscar's at uh, missing going with seven dollars to 13 ultimately. So if he's in the 15 to 20 camp, we've got Matt LaRoche at 33, and uh, Mike Rath is over at 10 to 30 dollars or 10 percent of 30. I don't know what that is 10 divided by 30. Um, let's see, and then we've got this one. Boom, look at that. Mike Monteclair says 100 to 125. I like them all, but I have to say, you know, it's not often that I agree with somebody, but I will say that, man, Alchemist might be the closest to the truth, but let's just hit a dollar first, okay? Can we just hit a dollar first? So just to be fair here, would, would it be respectful? Hopefully 25, says Ray, 589. I'm just going to go with 15 to 20. Let's just go with 15 to 20. Let's see what the poll said. So everyone thinks is, see, closer to where, Alchemist was in the five to ten dollar range, and I think he's probably closer to the truth. Thirty six percent of it, but then you've got your twenty. The next big one is twenty seven percent with people thinking it's going to be a hundred to five eighty nine, which honestly I would absolutely love. I mean, you would you would find no argument there. I, I mean, no one would be like that's ah, preposterous. Maybe, but I would love to see it. I would absolutely love to see that happen. Are you down with OTC? Please like. Subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.